what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video today's video is a little quick video that i want to go over talking about case iterable which is a protocol that uh, is often used with enumerations in swift so uh, as some of my older videos we're gonna start off on a playground and we're gonna take a look at it and then we are going to jump into a, a actual project to see it in action in the wild, quote unquote. So we're gonna put Xcode and go to file, new, and we're gonna select the playground here. And we're gonna stick with the blank playground. That's perfectly fine. I'm gonna go ahead and call it case iterable. We'll go ahead and stick it on my desktop. And once Xcode loads, let's see, once my fingerprints, all right, we're good to go. Let me expand this window to give ourselves a little more room to work. And we also bump this font size a little bit for all of you guys to see it better. So cool, case iterable. So like I said, case iterable is a protocol that's available to you used with enumerations. So let's start off by creating an enum. So those uh, who need a refresher, an enum can represent multiple states. So let's say uh, we have an enum, this is called state to make our life easy. And we're gonna say it has a couple cases and we'll say uh, active, inactive, uh, pause, uh, will start. These are just really random things that I'm making up as we go on the fly. So let's say we just have these, right? And to use an enum, we would do something along the lines of uh, my state is going to be of type state and we can simply say that in this case, we can just pick any of these. We can say it's inactive. Uh, of course, you can switch on an enum uh, and say uh, switch on my state and you can figure out which state you're in based on the switch, all that good stuff, but we can do it enums. So enter in case iterable. So case iterable, like any protocol, you can uh, basically conform to the protocol like this and it's, uh, it goes right in front of the enum and let's command click into it. Let's see what the declaration looks like uh, internal to Apple. So you can see it's a public protocol. Uh, there is a associated type on here and a static um, property called all cases. And we're gonna use a static property and as the name implies and actually the documented string as well, a collection of all values of this type. So let's say we wanted to have a enum that represented a list of things, right? So let's say we had something like, I don't know, let's call this states, right? And let's say we had all uh, US states in here. So we'll do something like Alabama, uh, Alaska, Connecticut, Connecticut, uh, I don't know, Washington. Whoops, we don't want the caps lock on, uh, so on and so forth. Let's say we wanted to get all of these out, right? Um, so we could just create this as an array. It's kind of verbose. This is a little cleaner and more type safe. So we could do is we could say all US states is state dot all uh, states rather dot all cases. And if you actually look at the signature in the autocomplete here, you can see that it's gonna return a collection of states uh, for both of these. Actually, you wanna use the lowercase one since this is a type that represents the collection and this actually has the collection itself. So now let's say you wanted to do something like uh, render a list for the user to select their current state. You could uh, basically uh, loop over this for state in all US states. And for our case, let's go ahead and print State dot raw value. We'll also go ahead and make this a string so it has a raw value. And that error will go away. And let me open up the console here and hit this play button. And you'll see that we'll get a list out, a printed list out, hopefully. Sometimes the playground decides to be a little finicky uh, of our cases in here. Uh, if it doesn't end up printing, we'll just pop into the project and see a real world example. But the point is all cases uh, from case iterable is a way where you can get uh, a collection, a array out of all your enum cases. So very, very simple, pretty handy though. Uh, so it looks like the playground's deciding to do what the playground does and not work half the time. So we're going to go ahead and close this. 
And I'm gonna open up Xcode again, and we're gonna create a new project. So we'll do create new project. We'll stick with a single view application, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this case iterable example. And make sure your language is Swift, you're in a UI kit, and your interface is storyboard. Uh, that way we will have to deal with Swift UI. We'll go ahead and save this on our desktop as before. And first and foremost, let me pick a simulator from our list here. Uh, let's go with the 11. Let's send the run button to get that simulator booted up and ready to go. And let me just jump into the view controller here. And I'm simply going to uh, add an enum similar to what we did in our playground here. And this is gonna represent a uh, country, right? It'll be case, it'll be uh, have a raw value of string and it'll be case iterable. And I'm gonna add a bunch of cases in here. So we'll shorthand it. So we'll say Canada, United, United, whoops, let's get rid of that simulator. United States, uh, what else? Spain, Italy, India, China, uh, United Kingdom, um, let's go with France. That's, that's a nice collection of a few countries there. And let's say in our app, uh, similar to what I was mentioning before, we wanted the user uh, to select basically their country, right? So let's say we wanted to uh, do that in a table view. We're gonna create a basic table view here. And if you're not familiar with table views, uh, please go take a look at the uh, other videos that I've got on tables. I've got uh, way more than I can even uh, count. Um, if you're not familiar, you can, of course, just follow along as well, but we're going to create a table here uh, and we're going to register a standard UI table view cell class to it for the ID of cell. We're going to go ahead and add it as a sub view like so. Let's go ahead and assign this guy a frame. It'll be view.bound so it takes up the entirety of the screen. And we're also going to save the data source for the table itself. Let's make sure we conform to the data source up here. And we're going to want two functions. So the first one's going to be number of rows. And the second one is going to be cell for row. So cell for row is pretty simple. Uh, get the cell by dequeuing it off the table. For the ID we registered, which is a string of cell. Uh, and again, that string registration is right here and we can simply return said cell down here. Now, where does case iterable come into the picture with all of this? Uh, so it's quite simple. Uh, so we have this error here because we need to return an integer to this function. So we have this enum called country. So we can simply return country dot all cases. Now that's an array and we want the count of the number of elements in it. So pretty simple. Now, how do we show, whoops, we want to get the uh, raw value for each of these cases out for each cell and assign it to the text label in a cell. So we can say um, list, or we can just say countries rather, is country.allcases. And for a cell's text labels text, we're going to assign it from countries to the given position dot raw value. So the takeaway here is really all cases just lets you access uh, in enums cases as a array or a collection uh, and basically as all cases. So you can iterate over the cases. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this and we should see a list of our uh, enum cases in a table like so. So this way you not only can organize your data in an enum and it's uh, quite clean to read, uh, but you don't have to do something along the lines of let array uh, equals Canada, Canada, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this way you can enforce not only iteration, you can do raw values some comparison, you can do a whole host of things with enums. And this is a pretty common pattern that folks will do uh, to keep their uh, data more type safe and uh, readable. So there you have it. That's case iterable. Very quick uh, little tip video for you guys today. Uh, if you haven't destroyed that like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Make sure to subscribe if you have not subscribed already. 
Don't hesitate to leave any comments down below for any questions, concerns, suggestions. We just want to say hi. Love hearing from you guys. Uh, we're almost at 10K subs, so let's, uh, let's keep it up. I'm super, super, super excited and pumped to see that subscriber count go up. So thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.